our interview this week, Dr. Andrew Kwasari explains how the National Livestock Implementation Plan will address the crisis between farmers and herders. Dr. Andrew Kwasari, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, Gloria. And let's, let's quickly delve into the National Economic Council's uh, an announcement, so to speak, of a 10-year plan to address the crisis between herdsmen and farmers. Now we have a 10-year plan and people you know, don't know, you know how this is going to, you know, you're going to go about this plan you know, mm. to resolve this crisis. Tell us more about this. Well, the National Economic Council announced the 10-year plan not arbitrarily. It actually followed the work that had started earlier on with, uh, by the Honorable Minister of Agriculture uh, and the entire Ministry of Agri. And they spent over two years looking at these issues. How do we solve the issues of uh, the conflict between farmers and headmen uh, or pastoralists? This had led earlier the ministry to dialogue with states, to visit stakeholders, traditional rulers, uh, pastoralists across the country. Followed closely by, uh, following that closely was also further dialogue that was specifically designed to really deal with this issue. So when the, the, pres the, uh, the president announced the presidential committee on farmer head uh, crisis, mm -hmm. and then the, the National Economic Council further consolidated by enacting uh, another committee that the two became one, two ministers were in this committee, the Minister of uh, Agriculture and the Minister for Interior. Now this committee was tasked first to go out there and carry out some facts finding. And this facts finding was led by the able governor of Ebony State, yes. uh, Dave Omahi, and I am the that secretary. Was some months ago. Yes, it was February, February, March, 2018. Yes. And we went to all of these states. Passionately, we listened to all stakeholders. We had a kind of uh, town hall meeting where all members were allowed to make oral presentation, documented presentation um, to to the committee on what they think is or are the causes of the conflict and how we can resolve them. Now, we took this report and compared with the one that the Federal Minister of Agriculture had already earlier on done, mm. and saw that there was striking similarities in the findings. So what then happened was to merge the two, because the Federal Minister of Agriculture was already looking at a plan that could solve the whole of this problem. Yes. And discussions went on, consultations to agree on how long this plan, for how long. What were the similarities? The similarities were essentially that A, these people have lived together cordially before. B, that the cordial relationship also is uh, checkered by conflict, particularly during the beginning of the dry season when the harvests are still, or, or the farm producers are still in the farm until harvest is removed. So we saw that through history, there has always been this conflict, even though there were mechanisms to resolve them in the past. But this conflict has trailed the existence of the pastoral and crop farming communities in our rural areas. So these guys ignore the mechanisms? Well, that is the issue. So actually... And insist they, on violence? No, it's not that they ignore the mechanism and insist on violence. That gradually, there is less and less attention being paid to the traditional or the alternative dispute resolution that has held the communities together in the past. Mm -hmm. So this led uh, to uh, more and more weight being paid to newer means, maybe more legal means of solving these problems that didn't help uh, in, in dousing or de-escalating the problems. What sort of legal? Are you talking about the courts? Because I mean, these are they, rural they, communities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand that clearly there were the issues of the courts, the issue of policing and all of this came into resolving issues that were heated to resolve by the traditional or community lead leaders. Majorly, the arrows of the, uh, of the pastoral community, the community heads or village heads or district heads of the, the, farming, the, the crop farming community. So what are the components really? Because if, if they have been ignoring the traditional ways of resolving these things, I don't see much, you know, much help the legal means would do for them. So yeah, but, what but, are the components of this 10-year plan that would work? Okay, so what we, what we now, so I was telling you that between the findings of the NEC committee and the findings of the Federal Minister of Agriculture, clear was that there, there was 
means before to resolve some or all of this conflict. B, that also there, there, is, there is clear agreement that resources drive these conflicts. The resources of pasture, of land, of water, which is scarce and is therefore comp comp uh, being competed for between the crop farmers and the pastoralists. And this also, and the third component that became very clear was that the changing uh, 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 climate or the impact of the climate change is also further exacerbating this uh, resource uh, discourse. So now, we looked at this and agreed that, okay, we need a 10-year at least. Mm. That doesn't mean that we can be more than 10 years. But we need to have components that are clear, that could address all of this. So A, we have six pillars in this plan. The pillar that has to do with economic investment, which is majorly what people have been talking about, whether to ranch or not, or to produce pasture or not. So all of the investments have to be under this pillar. Then we have the pillar that has to do with conflict resolution. And in this conflict resolution pillar, we are looking at what had worked before. How can we now work today? What are the mechanisms that could be established to achieve conflict resolution, particularly at the grassroots? We are concerned at what can work at the very uh, uh, local level and then to come up and I will tell you what we have done so far. So from your little findings, what can work? What can work basically is that we need to just go back and take this discussion back to the community leaders. And by community leaders, I mean the pastoral communities and the crop farming communities at the world level or is the village, the minutest level, that very level where this conflict happened, where that piece of land that the crop is destroyed or the cattle is poisoned or where that person is killed. That is where we are to start. And okay. this is what all the, se the seven states that are, that are earmarked for the piloting by the NEC uh, 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 implementation plan mm. is considering now. And we are having a third phase of discussion. Mm. And this is clearly what the communities are saying. That if you allow us to work, if you allow the traditional institutions, particularly, I can give you an example in Taraba State where they said, we went to a situation where the Ardo, who is the pastoral uh, community leader, and the Meangwa, or uh, the village chief of majorly the crop farming communities, sit together to agree what to discuss, and then call the members to discuss it. In Nasarawa State, they said, do you know that we know all the paths that lead to this conflict? We also know the paths through which foreign uh, uh, pastoralists come into our land. If you allow us to find a way to work with support from uh, Nigerian immigration, we could solve our problems. We could solve our problems and then we could sustain these agreements. And the issue is that there used to be agreement and they want to activate it. Let's discuss the issue of the cattle route. Today, the mm -hmm. cattle routes are blocked by either population or uh, expanding uh, activities of farmers. Uh, infrastructural development by government. So a lot of uh, cattle routes that were uh, earmarked before have been blocked. The communities are telling us that we can sit today between the pastoral community and the crop farming community and find other means that currently in 2018 are not cropped. And we can use that to find a uh, way to watering points and back to where we are without necessarily saying that we must follow the old routes that were gazetted or that were um, marked before. Dr. Andrew Kwasari, thank you so much for your thoughts on Day China Abuja. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for your mails and tweets as always. Keep sending in your views and comments using the email address and Twitter handles on your screen. Also, be sure to share anything happening within your locality. Don't you forget, you can view the program on youtube.com forward slash channels web forward slash videos. Thank you for watching this week. I'm Gloria Umezuki. See you again.